Hi, it's Carly McAvoy. Recall that earlier we talked about the formulas for any discrete probability distribution and they were given this way. I just want to remind you that when we say discrete, there's a reason we're saying that. That means we're talking about discrete numbers, numbers that can be counted. So we're not talking about decimals and fractions when we're talking about that. But when we're talking about binomial distributions, that's a very particular type of a discrete probability distribution. And we can use some simpler formula, formulas for the mean variance and standard deviation of those. So remember that n is the number of trials, p is the probability of success, and 1 minus p is q, and that's the probability of failure. So if your probability of success is 20, your probability of failure is 80. So to find that, the mean, which we're saying mu because we're looking for all of the values in this population of our distribution, um, that's n times p. Variance is, of course, the standard deviation squared, and that's just npq. And that's, again, the standard deviation of the entire population, so we're using sigma and not s. And so the square root of the variance is always the standard deviation, so the square root of npq is how we get the standard deviation. So here's an example. Find the mean and standard deviation for the number of heads in 15 coin tosses. Then use the range rule of thumb to find the values separating results that are significantly low or significantly high. And if someone shows you a coin weighted to get more heads than tails, and you get 12 heads in 15 tosses, does that suggest that the coin is indeed weighted? So the first part is asking us to find the mean and standard deviation. We know that n is 15. We know that P is 0.5 because when you flip a fair coin, there's always a 50-50 chance you'll get a heads or a tails. And Q is also 0.5 because 1 minus 0.5 is still 0.5. So the mean is 15 because that's the number of tosses times the probability of 0.5. That gives us 7.5. And the standard deviation is the number of tosses in times the probability of success times the probability of failure which is 1.9. And it's not exactly 1.9, but I rounded it to one place. Um, so the range rule of thumb, the second one says use the range rule of thumb to find those low and high values. The range rule of thumb is that we can take the mean and we can subtract two standard deviations to find the low number and we can add two standard deviations to find the high number. And anything in between those two values would not be significant because those are the values that we most expect to happen. So the low numbers, um, by that I mean significantly low numbers, are 7.5 minus 2 times the standard deviation, which is 3.7. And the high numbers are 7.5 plus 2 times the standard deviation, which is 11.3. So anything between 3.7 and 11.3 are, are not significant. Anything less than 3.7 is, anything greater than 11.3 is, greater than or equal to, I should say, because those have the equal to part in there. So note, I rounded off the standard deviation and I used that rounded off value to find significantly low and high values. You may need to use the actual standard deviation to be more accurate, um, depending on what your program or your instructor is looking for. Um, in the third part was if someone gave you a coin and you got 12 out of 15, would that mean that it's probably weighted? Well, the result of 12 heads is significantly high because it's greater than the 11.3, which we said was the boundary between not significant and significant. Since it's greater than 11.3, this would re result would suggest that the coin is weighted to yield more heads than tails. So you could say, yeah, this probably is a weighted coin. All right, have a fantastic day. We'll see you next